John Wayne got rejected by a lot of elite universities despite his high GPA and SAT score. And now he's launching a crusade against race-based admissions, but this has the Asian community kind of split. Yeah, this is going viral right now. Is John Wayne right? Is he wrong? Is he being used as a pawn? Joining us today, we've got comedian Alvin Kwai in the building. Ow. Damn, my bad, bro. Uh, what is your immediate hot take on this? Because this issue has been discussed in the Asian American world for, for decades now. Yeah, I think uh, uh, college should, should just be Asian. Just have all these. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's a hot take. Yeah, but that's the right take. Right. No one else deserves a college education. Right. And not even all Asians, only Chinese people. Just not only have Chinese <laughs> So basically Stuyvesant High School. If you're Korean, get out of the country. <laughs> <laughs> Comedian! Jokes! Uh, jokes. No, but, but yeah, for real, for jokes. real. Yeah. What? What, what is your actual hot take? No, I think, uh, I think three things, okay? First of all, this guy's being used by, like, conservative white people to, like, you know, try to pit minorities against right, each being other. Being used like, as a pawn by a political faction. Yes, yes. And then secondly, it is unfair against Asians, you know, college admissions. But third, thirdly, affirmative action still is important. You right. still have affirmative action. So you're saying he's a little bit right, but mostly wrong, essentially? Like, he, in I his mean, he's right to complain, but he's complained the wrong way. You right. know, he, he should be, yeah, he don't, don't bring like Latinos and black people into this. Okay. Don't just, just, yes. Just so who should he later. be targeting? Legacy white kids. Oh, mm. Those kids are dumb. Those kids are dumb. But my dad yeah. has this name on the line. Bro, they have no life experience. You know? All right. First of all, if your dad stupid. bought a wing of the building, you should just get in the college. We, I think we can all agree. Well, that's like in the hundred, <laughs> two hundred million dollar donation. Yeah. Right? I don't think there's that. Those amount of kids are not making up the colleges. <clears throat> Well, if, if it's just regular 20 million, don't get in. Anyway, let's run this clip of John Wayne complaining. What universities like Harvard really want is to hit their numbers on demographics, limit Asian American acceptance, and lock us into a rat race. They trot out their diversity slogans to defend this policy, but do they really care about African and Latino Americans? Or do they have some other ulterior motive? All right, you guys heard his stats, 1590 SAT, 4.65 GPA, Florida Quiz Bowl champ. Who knows what that is? Obviously not the Sun Chip Bowl. Uh, was a junior golf ranking. Maybe created a data analytics app for junior golfers. Who knows how advanced that app was? Was it on the iOS uh, store? I mean, I will say this though. Immediately, let me just say this. Can I just say this? Wow. Be his, judgmental. His energy doesn't seem very cool. Sure, yeah. <laughs> no, it doesn't seem cool. It seems like- yeah, he's like a Reddit he, moderator. <laughs> Andrew, what'd you think, man? Because we you got we got to hear it from John Wang's mouth himself. Uh, you know, I'm I'm not in charge of Harvard admissions, so it, it doesn't matter what I think about his personality. But I will say this: one thing is that college admissions starts to feel like the oppression Olympics, and that's what I don't like. However, I get that he's complaining because it seems like statistically wise, he should have gotten into at least UC Berkeley. That's yeah. a pri that's a public institution. That is a valid point. No, I get it. Harvard, Yale, listen, it's case by case. There's people with high test scores that got rejected from a lot of schools, and there's people with non-perfect scores that get into high school, right, uh, right, good right. schools. So right. it, it's it's not like all super clear. But anyways, guys, we're going to dive into the comment section, so please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys as we have this productive conversation. But is it ironic that somebody complaining about Harvard saying that all Asians are robotic, like, bland people sort of came across as a little robotic and bland yeah and like ben shapiro yeah i respect this the guy. entertainment value. i respect this guy he's leaning into asian stereotypes he's going to be robotic he's going to complain about he's know, complaining about is. robotic stereotypes while seeming robotic i guess they say you know? we have no personality oh, i'm just kidding no first of all i think he should have gotten into a good school I, I do think that he but i again like i don't think colleges all work together and they're like hey uh we're gonna reject this kid from harvard so uh yale can you take him doesn't work that way um no. somebody said he only seems focused on test scores what about his personal statement extracurriculars his essays a lot of i would say liberal asian people were questioning him basically saying what if he just fit the breakdown of like ten thousand other kids who had perfect scores that were asian if he was just the one that got left out because a ton of Asians with perfect scores also got in. So why is he complaining? He's one of the only Asians with perfect scores that didn't get in. Isn't that, isn't that funny that people are just like, you're only focused on your perfect test scores as if that's like a throwaway. Yeah. That's hard. <laughs> Getting a perfect score is like, that's amazing. People are just like, oh yeah. No, it is Get true. That is true. That is nerd. a good point. The liberal yeah. Asians, they, sometimes they're like downplaying that No, it's true though. Test scores mean a lot. I will say this, looking at the statistic that 
the high test scores in the SATs, they've doubled doubled over the past 10 years because I think it's kind of like what's happening in the NBA where people are like shooting three-pointers from like 35 feet out while 20, 30 years ago, that would be unheard of. Where it's just like people are getting so good at the tests that there's just more and more high test scores if you really practice it. Sure. You know, I'm not saying it's not impressive. Of, of course, yeah. only 1,000 kids get 1,600 per year on the SAT. So that's still not that many out of the kids well, who take it. I have some advice for John. John, just come out as trans. <laughs> it'll help. It'll help. Yeah, but you it'll have to do something too. You'd have to layer that identity with some sort of movement that you are the leader of, like the ASB president of that thing. Yeah, John, chop it off. <laughs> chop it off, John. <laughs> All right. Somebody said, I'm white and I had a top test score in 1980 and I got rejected by all the elite universities I went on to have a great career patent a bunch of technologies and start a bunch of companies so John it just goes to show you your life is not decided at 18 years old uh I went on to have a great life and I got denied from everything despite being good yeah it's not that important man like I, I think he's still going to be able to do what he wants to do and Georgia Tech is, is a great school so he'll, he'll be fine I think. do you think though that this guy's ability to freestyle his way to an ultra successful life partially was due to Possibly being white, though. Oh, you mean the commenter? I mean, of course, life is different, but I guess then it does go down this rabbit hole of like, oh, John comes, John Wayne comes from like a good Chinese immigrant family. Right. Although Let's just still say Chinese he's upper middle class. His parents were like professors at a community college. Yeah, or but they're still Chinese immigrants. But again, they, 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 he comes from like good stock of him versus, oh, this white guy who comes from a more humble family, uh, single mother, parent home, or whatever. Yeah, but, I, but, so it's just so, I, it's so I, tough. I, so I think that this is where it goes to an interesting discussion about Chinese culture or Asian culture culture or Confucian filial piety versus national exams and gal cows and stuff. Do you think that Asians due to our coaching growing up, we might be less likely to be able to navigate like the freestyle success of life. So we're looking for more like Amtrak train style. You know how the like Amtrak trains, they can't like hop pass in life. They're like on the path they're on. Yeah. That's why Asian parents are so concerned with the path that we get on early. Yeah, I don't think so. I, I think Asian Americans, especially like newer generations of like Asian Americans are able to adapt easily and I don't know. I don't, uh, I think we'll be- You disagree with that. I actually think that a lot of Chinese are still not coached with that freestyle ability. That's why they're so concerned with the early tracks. So are you blaming it on Chinese parents or Chinese culture or just being an immigrant to America? It's, it's a bad alignment. It's a bad alignment of like Asian parent goals and Asian parents' ability to teach a plan B to live a successful life. Well, I'll yeah. Alvin, I mean, you're on a very difficult path of becoming a- you know, comedian, a famous comedian, a very successful comedian, right? Is it, is that a difficult path? Are you kind yeah. of choosing a job that the is, freestyle is hard, track, is right? Absolutely. You, and I and I'm doing this like my parents are definitely like not supportive of this. But after a while, like you gotta like stop. After a certain age, you gotta ignore your parents. Like you gotta just do what you want to do. You know, everything your parents told you when you were young, just like smoke meth. You know, <laughs> do crack. <laughs> Just, just, just be yourself. But man. what about Alvin? You are not on. Uh, you don't have your Netflix special yet. I don't know when are you going to do, achieve the McKinsey of standup. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Somebody said, uh, Spot on. Andrew, that college apps should be faceless, nameless, just based off of a barcode. Maybe based off of more what socioeconomic factors, parental societal factors. Could this work? Uh, should college apps be nameless and colorless and pictureless? No, I don't. I don't. I don't think so. I mean, we're, we're just trying to ignore. Like, the, I think these people are just trying to pretend that race isn't a huge factor. But is it? It is a huge factor in how you're brought up and like the culture you're experiencing. And like the first person, the first thing you notice when you see someone is their race. So we should stop trying to act like that's not a thing. Yeah, you do make racial assumptions about what somebody has been through, not been through. Every human does it, whether overly conscious or subconsciously. Yeah, I mean, for some reason, it seems like when we throw a comedy show, mostly Asian people show up. I don't know why that is. You guys are racist, man. Yeah. <laughs> and I do agree, there has been historical oppression against all minority groups, but not to the same extent, obviously, to black people and then brown people more so than historical oppression on Asians. I still believe in historical oppression against Asians, but there is uh, extents, extremities, intensity levels. Obviously, they got applied more or less over uh, centuries or decades. Um, somebody said, do not let this be a wedge issue, guys. Support affirmative action. So this is from very, I guess, left-leaning Asians who do not want Asians to flip on affirmative action. However, I did some research. Most Asians, the majority, support the concept of affirmative action in corporate hiring or hiring in other fields. However, Andrew, over 50% of Asians do not support it for college admissions. So some, the Asians that support affirmative action, they kind of want it maybe partially applied, but just not to 
the part of their life that their parents care so much about. Yeah. Which makes sense that's though to me. Dude. To me, that sounds like a compromise, but I guess that's not how laws apply. Yeah. Yeah, I I guess if you're thinking about it logically, like, yeah, you know, I do think like other people should get some help, but you can't get help in the college admissions and also corporate hiring. Yeah. Then that's too much help. Dude, or dude, like these, that. Dude, these Asians are like, yeah, we should have affirmative action except for the things we participate in. So like college, <laughs> yes. You know, NBA, definitely affirmative action. <laughs> right. <Yeah>. No, yeah. <laughs> but you know, to me, dude, there's always affirmative action, whether it's written into law or not written into law. Like when Jeremy Lin was killing it in the NBA for that two months or three months, and he got on two Sports Illustrated covers, I think that a black player, it's true, would have uh, uh, would have gotten zero Sports Illustrated covers for what he was doing. I think a white player maybe would have gotten half of a big feature or maybe one one. Uh, Sports Illustrated cover, but an Asian guy who is probably the last person you would think would do be dominating the NBA for three months yeah. got two covers. So it goes to show you that in any field where people think your look can't do that thing or is like seriously breaking major stereotypes, of course people are gonna like give you an extra turbo boost, right? Yeah, of course. I mean, yeah. I think that's human nature. If it's notable, it's gonna be noted, you know? Like if you see like a tall Vietnamese person, you're like, holy. <laughs> I guess yeah. be well, it's just breaking the baseline time. statistics, yeah. right? Um, Andrew, what do you think about this comment? Because a lot of people were like, this, you know, this black girl was like, dang, crazy how everybody still figures out a way to blame us. Somebody said it's because Asians seek white validation from whites and they can't blame the legacy whites. And somebody said, man, elitism is an issue in higher ed, but damn, this guy John Wang needs to check his ego and underlying racism. And of course, Andrew, this was a very meh comment. Somebody said, listen, guys, John Wang needs to understand that whether he's blaming white liberals for creating affirmative action or white Republicans for having their rich legacy kids in colleges, he is getting pushed out both ways by white people. So how come John Wang is not blaming white people, but like to your point earlier, he's being kind of, it's kind of off. It sounds like at least in his tonage, he's, he's blaming black and Latino people for getting a boost on uh, their scores. Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely think that, um, I mean, Alvin, I feel like you really agree that he should be going after like the legacy kids, right? Because legacy kids might make up a disproportionate amount of the admissions and they're taking up a lot of spots from other very qualified kids that's yeah. not to say legacy all legacy kids are underqualified though either right no. i heard 20 to 25 percent of all kids at elite institutions are legacy kids but and they're mostly white dude a lot but a lot of them are like pretty dumb like dude i dated this girl <laughs> i dated this girl in high school she was like a, a daughter of a u.s senator she got into georgetown she's she white was well, well well she's gotten to georgetown and so like her you know her dad is like a, a senator you white. know so she, yeah, she was one of the dumbest people I've ever met in my entire life. She got into Georgetown, right? People well, because her dad could probably like get somebody arrested. Yeah, or but like, yeah, but like that's that's so unfair. It is unfair. It is unfair. That's the capitalistic system we Wait, have. So Alvin, you have a personal, a personal vendetta against white legacy kids. <laughs> Wait, what? No, he said, do you have a personal vendetta against white legacy kids due to your failed relationship with a white legacy oh, daughter yeah, of a abs congressman? Absolutely. She never, she never touched it either. You know? <laughs> anyway, man, moving on to the takeaways. Um, Andrew, well, what are your takeaways real quick? Or maybe we'll start with Alvin, man. What's your, what's your takeaways? Uh, we, you know, there's a lot to say for this. The argument can go in circles for hours and hours. Yeah. Um, is John Wang cool, right, wrong? Just... Looks like his name. Does he have a bad mustache? What's going on? Yeah, I mean he's. I mean he's got to drop the Hitler Youth mustache first of all, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, I mean he's like ten percent right, like ninety percent wrong. You know, like it is unfair for Asians, but you know, yeah, don't don't go after other minorities. My major takeaway is that I think if Asian Americans ones coach their kids different to be like a freestyle Amtrak train, they could actually jump tracks, which I guess is not an Amtrak train. It's more like a. I don't know, light rail or something. I don't know, just something more modern than an Amtrak train. Then we wouldn't be so worried about whatever institution you get into and get locked into whatever life path you get locked into at 18. So yeah. that's on the community. But then I don't know if the community doesn't have unity, then I don't know. I mean, but that's just what I think because I don't think it's fair to try to take away spots from black and Latino kids that have been historically oppressed or come from certain, you know, situations that are very different from Asians. But at the same time, I understand it is messed up that colleges are like, oh, yeah, we got too many of you nerdy Asians that are good at like these, these good things that you guys work hard at. So, yeah, we're going to down ramp your guys' quotas. Yeah, I think that... Economics should come into play. Economics of the family and the background of the kid should definitely come into play. But I think there needs to be like some sh 
I guess, more stricter metrics, at least for the public universities. I think private universities have always stood by this, that they do have more leeway in who they determine they let in. Now, they shouldn't, institution. they shouldn't be discriminating, but anything short of that, they can, they can kind of do things how they want. They're private. That's why they're private. But the public ones definitely need to have more strict um, metrics when it comes to economics of where kids come from. And I think that's going to help a lot of the underprivileged, underrepresented groups. Do you think that John Wang is kind of like, well, now that I've been rejected from Harvard, I'm joining Team White Republican because they have a place for me. And I like that they want me part of their friend group. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe just a couple of steps away from putting on that white hood, cutting them, those, <laughs> cutting those holes. Uh, <laughs> All right, you guys, let us know what you think in the comment section below. Check out Alvin Kwai on social media. And uh, until next time, keep it civil in the comment section. We out. Peace. Peace.